basically you just have to understand what temperaments are and why it is important in this whole relationship thing because in this whole relationship thing because it's um, part and parcel of of the whole relationship process understanding what makes people do what they do understanding what um, forms people and how they behave and all that when you understand all of this you better you know relate with them but the bible also says something the bible says that we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made so also besides just the relationship thing when you understand your your temperament it also helps you understand your calling because I believe personally that God made us, I believe personally that God made us the way we are to help us the journey in the quest of discovering who we are, discovering what we are supposed to do here on earth and all that. So God puts inherent traits on our inside to help us, you know, achieve, achieve that process. That's what I personally, personally believe, you know, so you can also use it to also discover who you are, what you are meant to do here on earth etc so we'll just start from there so not basically what is temperament what is temperament temperament is a combination of traits inborn that subconsciously affect our behavior that subconsciously affect the way we behave that is what temperament is you know like i said they are inborn some people say that these traits are genetically transmitted i agree most of them are but not all of them uh, i don't believe that all of them are yes some of them are genetically transmitted true i believe that nature and nurture play a huge part to our temperaments play a huge a huge part to who we are play a huge part to our behavioral you know and our inborn character so they are both they are inborn i agree but some part of it are also gotten through the process of socialization and interaction with our environment and all that. So my God, by observing those around us, a lot of people work like their mom or their dad over time because they live with their dad and their mom and they imitated them. So most of those things are inborn. And um, it's also point worthy of, worthy of notes to say that, you know, it's your temperament that it either makes you introverted or makes you extroverted you know, and all that. So... The next thing I'm going to define, the next um, I'm going to define for you is um, character. What is character? I would say character is actually the real you. This is who you are. The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So that abundance in your heart, I believe, is your character. Or it's also character is also a combination of your temperament. You know. It's a combination of your temperament. Character is also a combination of your temperament, your training, your moral values and beliefs, and your habit pattern. Your habit pattern. Things you do habitually also form your character. So it's actually a net result of everything that influences you. Also, also evolves from your religious commitment because as Christians, we also believe that as you practice Christianity and walk with the Spirit, that a lot of you know values are also inculcated in you that ultimately forms your character and who you are. And um, so it's also your character is actually really what or who you are when nobody's looking. That is really your character. That is really, really who you are. So the next thing I'm going to define before we move on is your personality. What is your personality? Uh, your personality is, is um, your outward expression, you know, expressing yourself outwardly. I'll put it this way. Your personality is uh, people's opinion, perception of who you are. The Bible says that man looks at the external countenance. That external countenance is your personality. But God looks at the heart. That heart is your character, you know. So your personality could be deceptive to a lot of people. I can't be introverted, but when I'm with people, I try to be, you know, I try to mingle and, you know, you know, mingle, talk and, you know, start a conversation and all that. But who, I'm, who I am truly is a totally introverted person. You can even call me an extreme introvert and you'll be far from the truth. So, but my personality outside 
doesn't really portray that. You know, when I tell people that I'm really, really introverted, they don't believe me. They're like, you, oh, you're not. That f- they're, they're, so I, and they're not lying because their observation of who I am gives them the impression that I'm not really introverted. You know, so that is personality. So personality is not the real you. It is a facade. It is, it is a front. It is what you put out there. And people, most times, you know, judge you by your personality. Personality and temperament is exactly what we're discussing today. There are four basic temperaments. Four basic temperaments that um, everybody should know about. There are four basic temperaments, and I'm, and I'm sure most of you have, have heard about temperaments, you have heard it taught or read up um, some of it. So there are four basic temperaments. The first one is the sanguine, the second is the chorelic, the third is the phlegmatic, and the fourth is the melancholic. Four basic temperaments. The phleg, the, the sanguine, the chorelic, the phlegmatic, and the melancholy, and they all have short forms. You can say san, the core, the phleg, and the mel. So we have this, we've categorized the four basic temperaments. We have categor- we've categorized temperaments in general into four. There are some other studies that will tell you that there are more than four, there are six, or there are three, and all that, but you know, the one that is widely accepted is this four. And as we go on, you also will also explain to you that truly the one that individuals are a combination of one or two temperaments. Everyone is a combination of more than one temperament. You know, usually two. We'll look at the sang first, the sanguine. We'll look at the strengths and the weaknesses of the sanguine. So we can say that the sanguine are lively people, the core are active people. Then the melancholy because they're really emotional. We can say they are blue or black. While the phlegmatics could be a bit slow. Most times they appear indecisive, most times, you know. It takes them a while to make a decision most times. We can say that the sanguine is warm. It's a warm person. They are very, very warm. They are buoyant, they are lively, they are fun-loving. They are very, very receptive by nature. They are, they are vibrant, they are vibrant. That is the best word, you know, we can really use to, to explain who a sanguine is. They are totally vibrant. They are vibrant, vibrant people. And they have this unusual ability to enjoy themselves. They are fun-loving, they are outgoing, they are sparky, you know, and all that. And they are also spontaneous. They take spontaneous decisions most more, more often than not. Uh, a biblical sanguine, Peter. Peter, I think, is a is a good example of of a sanguine, because before the others make a decision or do something, Peter is already acting. He's, he's out there acting. Like a good example was when when uh, he got some other disciples to join him to go out fishing after Jesus Jesus died. They were out there in the sea, and Jesus stood at the shore, called them. And John said, ah, that looks like Jesus. John was still talking. Peter turned. I was like, Jesus, who? Ah, he jumped out from the boat and started going towards Jesus. John was busy talking, calculating, checking, running commentary. Peter was acting. So a good example of, um, of a sanguine from the Bible is Peter. A very good example. When he came to arrest Jesus, he was the one that brought out his sword and sliced off <laughs> A, a guy's head straight up. You know, he didn't have time for any conversation and all that. You know, he's an action man. Part of the strength is that they are outgoing, like I've said before. Number two, they are responsive. Number three, they are warm. They are friendly. They make friends easily. They are approachable. You know, uh, they are always enthusiastic. There's no dull moment with them. They are always enthusiastic. They are willing. They are eager to do things, try out things. You know and all that they are also compassionate they are compassionate people you know but their strengths also are their weaknesses because each and every one of this um, temperament also have weaknesses that is why we are teaching it here because when we talk about compatibility if you remember the, when we looked at the principles of choosing a life partner we talked about this but i didn't dwell on it because i told you there's a full course a full class on that Using the, the the principle of compatibility, opposite attracts. You know, you know, if you are extroverted, it is better to get 
to it's better to marry somebody that is introverted so um, your weaknesses can be strengthened by can be strengthened by your spouse's strength and your strength can strengthen your spouse's weaknesses that's the aim of all of this so a sanguine weakness could be said um, to be that because they're so exuberant they lack discipline they lack discipline totally they can't uh, focus on a task and see it through they are also emotionally unstable you know today they are happy the next day they are gloomy you know up and down up and down you can never tell which way the pendulum will swing with a the sanguine then you can also say they are also unproductive because they lack focus they can't sit down to see a tax through that makes them unproductive you know it's a disadvantage and most times they are also into a whole lot of exaggeration they exaggerate a lot they are totally active they're practical people they are go-getters but they are go-getters they they pursue things with all vigor and um, they don't relent to their activity so they're go-getters they are visionary too you know they are strong-willed people these are the guys that when they make a decision about something it takes a long time it takes a whole lot to get them to reverse it they are totally strong willed they're also determined too say Corelic feels that he's um that he's self-sufficient he's very independent the Corelic feels that he doesn't need anybody he can do it by himself because he trusts so much in his ability to achieve things so he tends to be decisive he's not like a, a phlegmatic that takes time to make a decision. He he takes decisions on his feet. He's very, very decisive. Most, most, most often than not, those decisions are bad decisions. A Corelic is opinionated. He wants to say what he, he has in his mind and he won't want people to shout him down or hush him up. A Corelic thrives on activity. He's busy. There must be something he's doing. He's active. He wants to do this, do that. He's, he's, on, he's on the move constantly because he's an active person. You know, he just can't sit the police when you combine that with the sanguine they are totally totally work, work they are totally workaholic like i said he's visionary so because of that he comes up with ideas comes up with plans strategy you know he's constantly pursuing things he's very 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 ambitious he handles pressure well you know he doesn't have a problem with pressure he doesn't collapse under pressure you know he even puts himself on pressure he thrives he thrives on pressure he is not frightened by adversity. He's not afraid to take a leap into the unknown. He's not afraid to try something new. You know, that's something about the Coralix. He's not afraid to try something new. He's always constantly pushing the boundaries. A Coralic is strong-willed. You know, in some in some things, that's that's an advantage. To be strong-willed, that means they're not easily dissuaded. They're not easily, you know, convinced to do this or to do that. They are totally strong-willed. They are independent people. That also is a strength in some cases too. They are totally independent. They are practical. They are visionary, like I've mentioned. They are decisive. And the thing about Corellis is that they, are, they make good leaders. So a lot of leaders that, that break boundaries are usually Corellic in nature. But like I said, your strengths also are your weakness. So on the flip side, yeah, because, because they are strong-willed, it makes them cold and unemotional. You can take a decision, people will come beg them, ask them to rescind, ask them to rescind that decision, and they will not bother about it. They will stand by that decision. I have this independent thing about them, and we all know that no man is an island. So that self-sufficient thing is also not too good. Because they are decisive in nature, it makes them impetuous. They take rash and brash decisions more, most often than, more, more often than not. They are domineering. They like to, you know, dominate people, you know, put people under while they are on top, you know, and all that. They are domineering in nature. They try to control people. They are control freaks, you know, and they could be very, very sarcastic. Oh God, they're so, they, they get sarcastic. They're very, very unforgiving. They find it hard to forgive people, you know, that have hurt them, and they can get angry, they can get mad, you know, they can bust a fuse if you get them annoyed, you know. So those are the strengths. Those are the strengths and the weaknesses of um, a Corellic. So the next one I'm going to look at is the Melancholy. Uh, like Tim Lahe will say that this is the richest of all the temperaments. A Melancholy is analytical, is self-sacrificing, is practical, 
A melancholy is a perfectionist, wants things set right and things put in place as they are supposed to be. And by nature, a melancholy is an introvert. It's an introvert by nature. They are introverted, they are quiet, they are loners, and they can just take the back seat and observe. That's where their analytical nature comes into, into play. They are not like the sanguine at all. A melancholy doesn't really make friends easily. It's not the outgoing type, it's not the sparky type. It's withdrawn, so because of that, they don't really make friends. But they're the most dependable. They have the most dependable personality of all the four temperaments. So because they're really analytical, it helps them to diagon diagnose situation and profile possible solutions, you know, to to those problems and situations and all that. So I've mentioned some of the things that they are, so some of the strengths is that they are gifted people. They're gifted people, they're highly skilled. They are analytical, you know, any job that has to do with running analysis and all that. They are very, very good at it. They are good scientists. Pay attention to details. That makes them perfectionist. So that also makes them aesthetic, you know. They're aesthetic. They want everything to be fine, beautiful, everything arranged, proper and well kept and tidy. You know. They are industrious. They work very, very hard. They are laborious. They're laborious. You know. They are self-disciplined too. So all these strengths too also have weaknesses. And of course, because of that, they, they're always moody. You know, they are like a snail. You know, when you touch a snail, it recalls into into its shell. A melancholy is like that. Once you, you know, you you tread on their emotions, they just recoil. And my and my take them a long time to to come out from that shell. You know, so they are really, really they are they are really really moody. They are always on the low swing of life. While the sanguines are usually on the high swing of life. They are self-centered. It's all about them. They are self-centered. So it makes them a bit selfish too. They are prosecution prone. Because of the way they are, people tend to trample on them. People tend to, like a Corelli can feed off a melancholy any day. You know, they're prosecution prone. They are thankful. You know, they want to get back. They want to get back. Then they do it in a subtle, quiet way. Most times, they even know that they're the ones that are <laughs> the instigators of your pain. They want to get back at something you might have done, you know, to them a while ago. They are theoretical. They're very, very theoretical and all that. And they are totally unsociable. Like I said, they're introverted. They're not a social type at all, at all. Then they are very, very critical. They can criticize because, you know, from their analytical nature, they analyze things, it makes them critical, and they're always negative. You know, it, it would take a whole lot of stuff to get a melancholy to be positive. You know, they always see the negative of everything. They feel that everything bad happens to them. They feel that their own affairs, that their situation usually ends up bad. They feel that everything bad in the world, you know, happens to them. And nothing good ever happens to them. The phlegmatics are easygoing. They're easygoing people. They're also friendly to an extent. Uh, they don't really take a lot of things to heart. You know, they like the cool evening breeze, you know. They like things to move, no, they're jolly, they're jolly, they, they are jolly people, they're, they're really jolly people, you know, they are calm, they are cool, they could be slow, you know, most times, they're easy going, they're well balanced, you know, a phlegmatic is a well balanced um, temperament, they're not really at the extremes like a sanguine, a core, a male, you know, they're well balanced in, in everything, and a phleg is usually kind-hearted and, sympathet and sympathetic, they're kind-hearted and sympathetic. They seldomly convey their true feelings. They are very good masquerades. They can wear a mask well, and you can't really tell what's going on on the inside. They are good. They have good poker faces. They don't really um, show their true emotions. Most flags too lack friends. You know, they lack friends. Lack friends because um, you won't really say that extroverted you know they are borderline introverts they are borderline they are borderline introverts so they also lack friends and all that just like them just like the melancholy they have a good memory they have a good memory and most times they tend to watch life pass them by most times they are not they are not really active participators you know in life they are a good mix of emotions a good mix of emotions so you can see that some of their strengths 
I reflect is that they're calm, they're quiet, they are easygoing, they are dependable, they are objective, they are diplomatic, they are efficient, they are well organized. They're well organized. So that makes them good managers. Make them good managers. On the flip side, they need to be pushed, you know, to do things. They are not self-motivated. They're not self-motivated. They are very good procrastinators. They can shift events. Oh, we'll do it tomorrow now. Remember, they're jolly fellas, so they're good pro- procrastinators. They rather shift the work to the next day so they can go and you know have fun with friends, hang out and all that. They are selfish, yeah. They are stingy because they calculate, they calculate everything, they're stingy. They are quick to self-preservation. You know, they don't want to own up whenever things go wrong. They look for who to blame. They blame the closest person. They blame the closest person. They are also indecisive too. Like I said, they are slow. But they, before they make a decision, it takes them a long time. They are fearful, you know, the fear of the unknown. And they worry a whole lot. That's it. Like, like I've told you before, your personality, is that which people observe is your is your outward disposition is the you that people interact with and your personality is usually a combination of your temperament so you have to look at the different personality types which like i said is a combination of temperament why like i said we are studying this so you can discover who you are you can discover you know to help you to help you to discover what you are supposed to do to help guide you into your purpose and all that like we all know the holy ghost is the ultimate guide but god has so put some of these like road signs on the road if you are traveling to some place you've not been before you know there are road signs that point you to that direction that's actually what this is all about we're going to look at all the temperaments and let you know the kind of job that is best suited for each temperament and when we are done with that we'll now look at the different personality types so for first the sanguine. A sanguine, if you are a HR, you know, a HR manager and you want to employ marketers for a company, go for people that are sanguine. Why they are good relators, they can relate with people, they are they make friends easily. People like them, people like to be around them, they're busters, you know. So they are, they are good communicators, you know, they can do public speaking, they can hold a conversation for long, longer than most temperaments, you know. Then a Corelic is an achiever, he's a go-getter. A Corelic has that drive to go achieve something. He's self-driven, unlike a flag that is externally driven. You know, a flag needs a Corelic to be on his neck to get him to do things. But the Corelic doesn't need that. The Corelic can go do things when asked, because he knows he needs to do it. He's driven by what he's saying. He's a visionary, like I said earlier. A Corelic is individualistic, you know, not as much as a flag that's individualistic he puts so much trust in his ability you know but beyond that he though he's individualistic he's also a trainer you know he likes to develop people he likes to train people to get them to be better at their jobs to get them to be better people you know that's another thing about him it's as if that you know character trait sort of cancels the individualistic trait a Corelic doesn't really want to work with a team you know he wants to be out there shining you know on its own and all that you know a Corelic is a disciplinarian you know a Corelic believes in the rules must be followed and he follows the letter he's a disciplinarian now a melancholy is an analyst very good analyst you know very very good analyst and a flight like i said is a good manager he's a good administrator you know you put him put him and charge him to be and make him in charge of our people you know, he can manage people. He's a, he's a good human resource manager. He's a diplomat. You know, he knows he knows how to say the right thing at the right time. You know, he knows how to win people over to his side. Now, personalities. We're going to blend. We're going to blend the temperaments. Like I said, everyone is a combination of at least two, or most often not two. So we're going to first look at the group. First group. We're going to first look at the first group, which is the sanguine, and there are three possible combinations. Of that is that you're a sun male, you're a sun core, or you're a sun flag. So the sun male is a sanguine mel- melancholy, the sun core is a sanguine corelic, the sun flag is a sanguine phlegmatic. The one that comes first is the dominant temperament. So this a sun core is dominantly a sanguine, then the 
correlic is like a secondary temperament so we're going to look at it that way first a sand male a sand male is highly emotional they can fluctuate drastically you know they can laugh hysterically one minute and burst into tears the next you know, he, 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 a sand male appears not to be in control of his emotions because of the melancholy aspect to it they are easily irritated and if things that they don't they don't like or things are happening around that they don't like they easily verbalize it what makes them talk about it is that sanguine in them then what makes them a bit irritable with what is happening around them is the male in them you know so the male in them because they're very very critical people you remember the male are perfectionist so when you do things around them that is a bit tacky they don't like it. A pure male will not really talk, but some male will boss up like, hey, don't do this, I'll stop it. You know, he'll come on you and all that and tell you to please stop this and, and stop all that. When things are happening around them that are not going on right, remember they're perfectionists. They just have this sudden outburst and they try to correct it. Some male are dreamers. A good example of a sand male is David. David is boisterous at the same time is melancholic. You know, when you read the Psalms, you can just see a sun male. It's posterous, happy, gay, jumping, playing music. The next minute he's there crying, Lord, I am this, I am that, have mercy on me, I'm this, that, that. You know, he's crying, he's on the floor, he's rolling. Remember when the prophet Nathan, you know, you know, met him and told him of his sin. The next minute he was on the ground rolling and all that. You know, David is a good, a perfect example of a sun male. They are colorful, they are dramatic, they're emotional and they are also weak, so to say. And a sand male has the ability to pick up their life, pick up pieces, pieces of their life quickly after a sad event. And when you look at David, you can see, you see him do that severally. After a sad event, he picks up himself, he moves on, he moves to the next thing quickly. You know, they get over things quickly. You see a sand male lady that uh, maybe the boyfriend broke up with today. Today she's crying as if the world is ending. She'll tell you she's going to kill herself and all those stuff, drama. The next second, you see him. The next second, you see her the next day with another guy. And you'll be like, ah, why is the one crying the other day? You'll be like, oh, forget that. And she, she has moved on. You know, they are like a swinging pendulum. Today they're up, the next day they're down. They just swing and they swing very fast. They move from one emotion to another quickly. The next one we're going to look at is the sand core, the sanguine correlic. You know, the sand core. A person that is a Sankor is an extrovert to the extreme. <laughs> you know, a Sankor is an extreme extrovert, you know, because of the two temperaments that she or he is made up with. You know, the sanguine part makes her or him people orient oriented, makes him enthusiastic, a perfect salesperson, a perfect salesperson, but the core in him or her also makes him or her you know have this drive pursuing the next thing you know on the move to the next thing so that sound call makes them you know have that drive and on that day they start up as a marketer but they're aiming to be the marketing manager that's the correlic in them and the sound call usually are highly highly successful you know in in whatever career they they are pursuing because they are good at it and they also have ambition you know so they're very they're they, those two traits makes them successful in life but they have a weakness because they are such an extrovert he exposes them a whole lot they don't really pay attention to details you know you can easily be duped pranked and all that um he also makes them a bit obnoxious threatened you know usually they don't have a, a very healthy self-esteem you know of course he also makes them get angry all that. So the next one we're going to look at is the sand flag. The sand flag. The sand flag have has an overpowering, obnoxious character, to say the least. You know, uh, outgoing. You know, because of the sand, and also easygoing. So it's an easygoing outgoer. <laughs> if that is anything like that, you know, a sand flag has charisma people like him you know he knows how to win the crowd you know he has this thing about him people like him you know he's a he's a, he's a good body you know, somebody you can you like to hang out with you know, he's a good body you know and all that you know but his uh, greatest weakness is that um, 
it lacks motivation remember it doesn't have that drive and when you now let like the flag doesn't have the drive when you add the sun that lacks focus it becomes disastrous it becomes disastrous so a sun flag like i said the phlegmatic is a good politician a good public speaker when you add the sanguine to it it makes it makes a it makes him a good orator makes him a good public speaker people love to hear him talk you know like obama we like to hear him talk. He has a way with words. He will be a perfect, perfect politician if ever he pursues that as his career. So we're now moving to the second group, Group B, which is the dom- Corelic is the dominant force here. Corelic is the dominant force here. So um, a Corsan, a Corsan is the reverse of the Sanko. You know, he's a good motivator. Yeah, he tries on challenges and all that. He's almost fearless. You know, he he's energetic. He's always on the go. He's active. You know, but he also has his own weakness, like they all do. You know, he he's hostile. You know, he's hostile. He takes his domineering nature to an extreme. You know, he hounds you down. He's totally opinionated. He says it the way it is, regardless of how you feel about it. Remember, he doesn't care about how you feel. A Corelic is totally unemotional. So you, your emotions can't get to him, you know, and all that. So because when you not add the sound to it, it makes him, you know, it's in vocal. It makes him vocal. You know, he's, pre- he's prejudiced, he's impetuous. And sometimes they could be manipulative. Yeah, they could be manipulative. They use people to achieve their own game. Their own selfish game, so they could be manipulated too, you know. The next one is the Cormel. The Cormel is a Corelic that also has a male factor in him. Now, Corelic is a hard worker. When you now add the male factor to the Corelic, what do you have? A industrious hard worker. <laughs> I mean, he's going to work, going to work, work, work. I tell you, if it's your boss, oh my God. You're going to walk, 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 walk yourself off. You know, you'll be totally stressed. But he's still, like I, like I said earlier, acrylic thrives on that, thrives on activity. So he's um, goal oriented. He's goal oriented. He sets a target, he pursues it. He pursues that target. And he does not stop till it is achieved. He's a dictator, you know, it is dictatorial in nature. He's a dictator. You know, want everybody to obey him, want everybody to admire him, want everybody to admire him. If you don't admire him, he comes after you. He will blast you from the mountain top and all that. You know, he's a witty talker. He could be very, very sarcastic too. The conflict is a blend of the quick, active, subdued, controlled, you know, calm, not excited. He's not bubbly, nothing takes him. He doesn't like surprises. You know, he wants to be in control of everything. He doesn't want anything to happen without him knowing. You know, he hates surprises. So he's um, deliberate and subdued, but also in control. He helps people. He's a bit um, empathic, a bit empathic. Uh, it's not a core, 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 it's a bit empathic, but still believes that the rules must be followed, you know, and all that, that anybody that deserves to be punished should go for the punishment, you know. He believes that anything can be done better if it's organized, properly organized. You know, of course, he also has his, he has his weaknesses. You know, his, his quick temper is not, it's not an asset at all for him, at all, at all, at all. You know, he's also very, very, very sarcastic. The first is the male sun. That's a melancholic sanguine. The melancholic sanguine is predominantly introverted, more often than not. They make good scholars. When you saw these professors, you know, that look funny, shabbily dressed, and all that, these are who they are. They make good scholars, good researchers, and all that. They are bookies. They are bookies. They, they, they could be nerdish too. You know, they could be nerdish too. They they thrive also in, in crafts. Ah, they're artistic. They're artistic. They, they also make good teachers. Good teachers, yeah, good um, educators. They are often loyal husbands or wife. You know, they are also good musicians too. You know, because they have this thing, they have this creative spark. 
in them. They are good musicians. They're just they're just skilled. They're, they're geniuses. You know, they have okay the male side and the male and the male flag. They are geniuses. You know, they also have the cap- capacity to show both sides or both extremes of emotions. You know, the up and down swings. They could be bubbly and they could also be totally totally introverted and reserved and moody. You know. They are easily moved to tears. They cry a lot. I mean, their tears are just at the brim of their eyes. They, they, they feel everything deeply. They are deeply emotional people. Uh, they can be critical. Remember, the males are totally critical. You know, and they can also be hard on people. And of course, they verbalize it too. You know, they are often fearful and insecure. Yeah, I mean, if they don't have a good self self image, they are totally insecure. And um, generally, melancholy. When we match them to Bible figures, you, whenever you find the prophets, you know, the prophets are melancholy. So, a male son, Jeremiah is a good example, John the Baptist is a good example. Fivefold ministry, if you match the temperament to the fivefold ministry, the apostles are correlics. Correlics. Some of them could, can also have the sanguine thing. They could be, they could be called san, you know, or san call. You know, the, the apostles are, are correlics because they're visionaries, they're visionaries. They're the ones that have the plan, the idea. The strategy, they are go-getters. They, 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 they are the sent one. They go and break ground. They are ground breakers, you know. Then um, the prophets are melancholy. Yeah, totally. They are totally. They are melancholic. They could be a blend with any other temperament, but they are predominantly melancholic. Then the evangelists are sanguine. Oh my God, you can't be an evangelist if you're not. You don't have, you don't have a sang in you, because it has to do with meeting people, reaching out, and all that. So they are, they are. The evangelists are sanguine. They're sanguine. Then the pastors, because they are they are administrators, they are flags more often than not. They could be a blend with any other any other temperament. They are predominantly flags. The pastors. And then the last uh, fivefold. The last in the fivefold are the teachers. No, the teachers. Uh, they're a bit peculiar. They could be anything. You know, they could be anything. But more often than not, remember we looked at the core. The core sound now, and we say, um, sorry, we looked at the the male core now, and we say they are good educationists. So a male core, a teacher could be a correlic, a correlic. They have that correlic thing in them, you know. They can also be a melancholic too. That is why most um, men called of God are usually prophets. And teachers, so they have this male thing too, and they have that core, that core thing in them. So a male core is a good teacher, is a good teacher, you know. So that is about the male core. But the male core also has his weaknesses, you know, in that they they are extremely difficult people to please. You have to try hard to please them because the male thing in them makes them perfectionist. The core thing in them because they're the ones. They have the blueprint. They know what and how it's supposed to be. So if you are not doing it that way, you know, they are not really happy. Now, blending with that perfectionist thing from the male, oh my God, they are hard to please. <laughs> they are totally, totally hard to please, you know. So they are also haunted by persecution. You know, persecution. They are hostile. They are by persecution. People get also hostile to them people also criticize them too a whole lot and their and, they, and their favorite um, let's say appeal to god is why me they always like why me why me why is it me why am i the one that is constantly suffering going through things why am i constantly being persecuted you know and all that so a male flag i'll make also good scholars you know their their genesis too you know, Genesis, they they are gifted, they are gifted, they are highly skilled, you know, they're intelligent, brilliant people too, they are nerds, you know, they are gifted introverts, if you permit me to use that word, you know, they are also good organizers, they are humanitarian, they they carry out a lot of me a lot of charity, uh, they carry out a lot of charitable works, you know. The world inventors to fall under this category you know because they're so intelligent you know they are vulnerable to fear 
anxiety they usually have this negative self-image they think they're not really good enough for people and all that you know they criticize people clearly in church when they when somebody falls into a sin or they hear about a sin that somebody they, they criticize they're usually hasty to criticize them uh, a good male flag in the bible you could say apostle john the bible said the one that god loved the one that usually puts his head on Jesus' his bosom he's a good um, male flag you know a good male flag and like you remember he later became one of the foremost leaders of the church the one that now was able to capture the future that is yet to come and wrote them in a book called the revelation let's say he's happy he's easy going he's people oriented he's a uh, diplomatic oh yeah he's a good diplomat has a way with words you know, he has a good personality. He he does not really take up a career in sales, marketing, and all that. But he he can manage he can manage things. He, he prefers working from the desk. Though he has that sand thing in him, oh, but remember the flag is is dominant. You know, and desk workers are usually flag and, and melancholy people. You know, of course, a flag male is an ultimate. Dex worker walks behind the Dex. Actually, doesn't even walk behind the Dex. Walks behind the scene. They're the ones that don't. They don't really interface with the customers of the company. They walk. They are back office staff. That's the flag mail. We will get there. Uh, but the, the weakness of a, a flag sign is that um, they lack motivation. Remember, they lack motivation. They are not self-driven. They will need external force to push them to achieve things or to do things more often than not. They lack discipline. They lack discipline. Um, they have short attention spans too, but um, they tend to to be easily distracted, <laughs> easily distracted, you know, from a task, you know. The one is a flexan who usually marry a man that has serious correlate in him, you know, that can push, drive, drive her to achieve things she's supposed to achieve, you know. When the man is a flexan. You know, the woman, the wife usually complains that this her husband needs to be pushed to do this, to achieve that. You know, if not, he'll just be docile and be a couch potato. Then the flag call. They're easy going, they are excellent group leaders, you know, and all that. They rarely offer service to others. They try to exercise control over others, but they also have a problem. They they find it hard to take responsibility for things. You know, they look for the next person to blame when things go wrong. They are not fighters. They don't have that drive. They give up easily. When something is a bit difficult to see through, they just give up. You know, they usually retreat when things become hard and difficult. And, you know, and I think um, Tim Lahey usually characterizes Abraham as a flecker. And the last one, oh, last one is the flag mail that's the last one flag mail they are rarely angry or hostile and almost never say anything for which they must apologize for they never embarrass themselves or embarrass others you know they try to do the proper thing they they live in the straight and narrow they're the ones that want to obey all the rules to their letter they don't want to be the bad egg you know they're that kind of people they respond to the need of others they let themselves move out into the stream of life and work with people where they are you know they are neat they are organized in their working habits they do well in photography printing inventory analysis adverts education and all that they are handy around the house you know and as energy permits you know they try to keep the house in good order you know for their weaknesses a flag male father may neglect the discipline necessary for their kids. You know, they're the ones that are the juicy you know, kids like flag male fathers because they hardly punish discipline their children. They, they're easy going and the emotional part of them will even let them hurt it twice. You know, so their kids tend up to grow up and tend to be a bit, you know, spoiled and all that. You know, they are also selfish people. Oh, they're so selfish. They want the world to also revolve around them. You know. They have this obsession against being involved in things because they are afraid of overextending themselves or getting, you know, or they are afraid of afraid of um, being rejected. You know, they're afraid of being rejected. Most often, they're not. So they don't really put themselves out there 
as they ought to. Okay, that is it. So these are all, all the various combination, and there are twelve of them. So you now know which one you are. You know your percentages might not really be sixty forty, maybe seventy thirty, or thereabout, with the dominant temperament being the first one and all that so you look at yourself objectively i also get people to also talk to you about yourself because there's some parts of you too you don't know you know there's the revealed you the unrevealed you there's a hidden you and all that so when you talk to people and all that it will help you arrive at a conclusion of who truly you are or which combination you are God bless you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and look at the other, other masterclasses on relationship that I have. And very soon I'm going to have masterclass on um, success coming soon. So you make sure you hit me up, subscribe to my channel so you get a notification whenever a new class is uploaded. God bless you.